have two sessions this morning. Um, just a few minutes, just share a few things, and then myself and Evangelist Onyebuchi would be responding to a few questions. Am I correct? So whilst you are listening to me, to take everyone's question this morning, but uh, permit our bias to be particularly for people who may have been in business or any kind of entrepreneurship, you will want to just pen down your question. There will be a system of collating and just screening them together, and then we'll respond to some general questions. Will that be fine? Father, help us this morning again. We have come depending on your wisdom, depending on your grace. And we ask in the name of Jesus that you will grant understanding. Amen and amen. Please, I want to encourage everyone, get yesterday night teaching. Please, get it. This is the kind of gift you should give to someone you love. You know anybody who is in business who has a humble heart to learn, please get this and give to them. It will change their lives tremendously. Are we together? Haggai chapter 1, please. Haggai chapter 1. Verse 8. Are we still good this morning? Okay, fine. Haggai chapter 1, verse 8. It's an instruction here. And I want us to read it together. If you can see it. Let's read together. One, two, read. Go up the mountain and bring wood and build the house and i will take pleasure in it and i will be glorified said the lord one more time please keep that verse there it's a very interesting verse because Anyone who has done agriculture very well knows that you don't get wood on the mountain. No. Wood is gotten in the forest. Wood may not grow from that altitude. But it says, the tool to build my house is on the mountain. And you are instructed to go up the mountain. That when you go up the mountain, you will find wood there return back from the mountain with the wood you have gotten use it to build my house and he says in doing so you will bring me glory are we together and the bible tells us that satan took jesus into a certain kind of mountain please follow carefully this morning and from that mountain he showed him all the glories of the world and told him that this has been given to me if you will bow to me i will give you access to the glories that are on that mountain mountain in scripture prophetically represents spheres of influence are we together so every time the bible talks about mountains number one it talks of spheres and influence number two it talks of systems and structures Number three, it talks of institutions. Please understand what we are dealing with this morning. So mountains in scripture is symbolic. Number one, it talks of spheres of influence. Number two, it talks of systems and structures. And then number three, it talks of institutions. So he tells you that the wood that is required to build a house for God is hidden in certain spheres of influence. Please listen carefully. Is hidden in systems and structures and is also hidden in institutions. And that going there is not going to be an easy journey. He says go up the mountain. It's going to be against the tide. It's going to be against gravity. But when you go up that mountain, don't stay there. The only reason why you are going there is to bring the wood 
that you will use to build a house for God. So right from the beginning of your journey, you already know why you are going to get the wood. That I am getting this wood because the Lord's house needs a structure. And that it is an honor for me to be part of those who build his kingdom and build his house. Are we clear on that this morning? Remember we are building from what we are dealing with yesterday. It's very, very important. That means that remember from one of the laws I taught you yesterday that all wealth comes from God through man to man. That means if God has released it and it has not gotten to you, it means it is in the hand of a man. Are we getting the technology now? That when your money is missing, there are only two places to search for. With God or with men. Now, the strange thing is that God is only one God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God. But men are not one. They are 7.2 billion. <laughs> it's easy to look for one God. Because he's the same yesterday, today, forever, seated on the throne. But which of the 7.2 billion men has your money now? Yeah. At least you know it's with men. But who? Sometimes the distance between you and the man with your money can be as far as from here to America. <laughs> so it's not just someone in Joss or Abatua or uh, mention one place for me again. Anguan Rukuba. Are we together? Yes. So what I share with you this morning is the technology that brings the man holding your money from wherever he is to where you are. That's my assignment this morning. In physics, there is what we call magnetism. Magnetism is a technology that can separate various um, metals from other non-metals. Are we together? That means a technology was designed to save you the rigor of hand-picking metals one by one. Some of the metals are sharp and can injure you. And so there is a technology where you run a metal across a space with a mixture of metals and non-metals. Are we together? And that for, provided there is a metal lying down there, whether you are aware of it or not, if you pass that magnet, that metal must live where it is. The magnet does not go down to where the metal is. Understand what you are about to become this morning. Are we together now? Imagine if you had to look for the metals one by one. Choking your hand to check, it could injure you. The rust could injure you. But all you need to do is get a magnet that is so powerful. There are magnets that lift cars. Not tiny metals. Are we together now? What if that magnet is you? Are we together? What if that magnet becomes you? And I also learned in physics that there is a way you can make a metal that was not magnetic to become magnetic. A metal that had no business becoming magnetic to attract others something can happen to it that under a certain condition and that's the condition we want to create this morning please don't think i'm wasting your time forget about what you would have sold already in your shop how much would you have gotten by now just pay attention to what i'm teaching you and you will rise as if the devil does not exist hallelujah Go up the mountain, bring wood, 
build me a house that I may take pleasure in. And then I will be glorified. The church for many years, can I use you people again? Oh, by the way, she was one who led worship. Powerful lady. Let's appreciate her. I mean, when I came and I just heard the lady leading worship, I said, who is this? Are you married? Make sure you marry a nice man, eh? All these men come to church and look for good girls like this that know how to worship and just take them away from the throne room. So make sure that you have a responsibility to meet your pastor to help you so that um, you choose right. And if you are here, you are looking at her, come through your pastor. I'm joking. Are we together? Now, look up, please. For many years, the battle between the church and the business world has been who really controls the true principles that govern wealth and abundance. Please listen to what I want to share with you now. When you meet an average minister, he will tell you that there are laws that provide for wealth and abundance. Are we together? Usually the laws will start from tithing and end somewhere around giving and sowing. And then maybe prophecy on top. And then he stops there. And he can tell you and show you evidences of people who use that formula and seem to become blessed. Are we together now? And then you find out that for many people, you continue to practice that. And it looks like there is an epileptic wealth index for you. You are up today, you are down tomorrow. Someone just blesses you haphazardly, no predictability. And you continue to see the preacher rise. And he tells you, look, all I do is I stand, I call money, I do all of that. And he may not be wrong. Then when you go for a business seminar, you see a sharp, nice-looking, intelligent, wealthy millionaire tell you, forget that nonsense that your preacher has taught you. If all you keep doing is tithing and prophesying, you will go broke. And he will also bring his own results. <clears throat> With people who were frustrated in church and came to listen to him, and within months became multi-millionaires. So all of them seem to have their results. And the challenge many times is that there is an unwritten, there is a cold war that goes on between the business world, are we together now? And the spirit realm. Please listen. You get what I'm telling you this morning, you will thank your pastor for putting this summit. When the tribe of Israel were being allocated land, please listen. There was a tribe that was mandated to not be given a physical allocation. Are we Bible students? You are aware of that, right? And the Lord made a statement and said, I will be their inheritance. That means the wealth system of a Levite is different from the wealth system of the 11 the other tribes listen to me this is the mystery behind men of god getting blessed whether they do anything or not and if you are not a minister and you use that formula you will fail listen to me the wealth system allocated for a levite will not work for a non-levite the nature and the character although there are many things that are similar now watch this now this is very important i can minister somewhere and someone can see me and be so blessed or listen to my message or something or even have a revelation god can give him my account number and he does not know me and in simple obedience he will get up and send what is someone's prayer request for five years now if you sit down and that's the experience you want to use to build your life and feed your children and move from tenancy to have a house of your own society will soon call you an irresponsible person the reason why many people continue to fail is because they are using the levitical system of wealth that was allocated for only men of god and sometimes we men of God are not careful enough to study 
that there is a little difference in that operation and so we continue to impart that levitical system on the people and you will find out that they, are, they don't do any other thing they are waiting to be wealthy the same way their man of god was wealthy and then the only person that continues to grow is whoever is in ministry so they find out that since being a member didn't bring that money let me make myself a levite so that i can by force come into that kind of thing are you blessed this morning so let's settle it very quickly that the system by which god blesses men of god is slightly different from the system by which all are now the man of god can still tap into the universal system allocated for the saints in addition to the privilege he has as being a levite that's what makes certain men outstanding are you getting what i'm saying now very very important remember the children of eli were given the privilege to use the fork remember and to take part of the portion and that whatever was taken would be for their own benefit So by the time you sit down and look at a man of God and the way God is increasing him and things happening around and you just assume that it will be like that for you. So you come and meet your wife and you say in the name of Jesus we know that our needs are met and we are done. Everything is fine. We are happy people. Sooner or later you will find out that you are being frustrated. And then you come back and then your pastor returns back and says I just came back from somewhere. A man met me in a bus who does not know me and just said the spirit of the Lord said I should collect your account and for the next 12 months I should give you a million you say pastor I need that grace he says receive it and he prayed for you from his heart but you never get the opportunity to enter any bus with anybody having a revelation about you and yet your rent is almost due listen to what I'm teaching you this morning both the spiritual laws of wealth and abundance and the business laws of wealth and abundance are together called kingdom laws there is no dichotomy to them there are only two dimensions of the same system are you getting what, what, what i'm teaching you this morning because when you understand this then you will now find out that being spiritual and having a business mindset you are not creating a dichotomy to your experience you are merging these dimensions together very very important the spiritual laws of wealth and abundance are responsible for the arrival of financial resources and the insurance of financial resources the business laws are responsible for the management and the multiplication. Understand the roles they play. Spiritual laws of wealth and abundance are responsible for the arrival of resources and the insurance of resources. Business or natural laws of wealth and abundance are concerned with the management systems and then the multiplication so if all you know is the spiritual law resources will keep coming according to god's integrity but you will continue to go up down up down because the intelligence to manage to multiply to replenish is not there if all you know is just business laws you lack the fortitude to ensure yourself and all of your estates and everything can crash in one day because there is no spiritual backing is someone understanding me this morning very very important that you must learn now i know that many of us know a lot about the spiritual laws i'm sure that your pastor alongside many messages that you have listened to have helped you here and there but i want to focus on the business laws the next 10 minutes i'll just touch on it and then We'll do Q&A. Is that alright? God bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Thank you. The first law that I taught yesterday is one of the natural laws of wealth and abundance 
It's called the law of mental transformation. We dealt with that yesterday. That realities are only sustainably manifested when they are realities that have been created from your mind. For as he thinketh in his mind or in his heart, he didn't say so he will become. So he is. So your environment is a mirror. It shows us who you are right here. Are we together now? Your body is merely an executor of thoughts and intents that have been concluded from the realm of the spirit. So if a man takes his hand, come my dear, if a man takes his hand and slaps his wife, the hand did not move on his own. The hand was obedient to a mindset that said the only way to get order in this house is to slap your wife. Are we together now? If a man embraces his wife, the hand did not just go and embrace the woman. There is a thought pattern that made him know that with love and understanding, this home will continue. The body is merely an executor. When the hand is holding a bottle of beer, the hand is only obedient. It's the mind that wants to drink, not the body. When the hand stops holding the beer, the hand did not stop. It became obedient to a mind that was transformed. So your body is merely an executor of the realities that have been agreed upon. Please understand what I'm teaching you this morning. So if your pocket does not hold money, your mind is telling your pocket to do something that it is obeying. If your bank account refuses to hold money, your mind is instructing your bank account to reject abundance by the decisions the habits the paradigms and the things that you continue to do so the first law is the law of mental transformation we dealt with that yesterday night please go and get the message this morning i want to share with you thank you the law of value I touched a little on it if i can remember last we met the law of value everyone please say value please shout it value. value write this down please value is a measure of your usefulness value is a measure are we together of your usefulness number two value is a measure of the problems you solve and the solutions you provide that are needed and useful underline needed and useful value is a measure of the problems you solve and the solutions you provide that are needed and useful within the context of a civilization value is a measure of the problems that you solve and the solutions that you provide that are needed and useful within the context of a civilization there are so many people jumping up and down convincing themselves and even flattering themselves that they are valuable but your value must be needed and useful to be rewarded understand this it's not enough for value to just be rewarded now listen to me assuming come my dear assuming this lady has a masters in typing there are very few institutions today in our world in as much as we know that would be interested in her value is that true now it's true that she's valuable but the advancement in technology has made her usefulness obsolete imagine that you are an expert in computer appreciation you know those things people used to make money with before and you come and say i i i know a lot i can teach you how to own a computer and tell you this is the on button and this is that you're going to go out of business why you are valuable 
but your value is no longer needed and useful within the context of a civilization you do not have to go to school to operate a phone so if you set up a firm to teach people how to operate phones you most likely will lose the devil does not have to attack you you will lose the laws themselves will fight you are we together so you are only valuable to the degree to which you are perceived to provide solutions and to solve problems that are needed and useful within the context of a civilization i don't see any children here all of us here are adults i mean babies now if this door were locked and you were told to sell one product here if you bring a feeding bottle to sell or pampas to sell now you are valuable but your value within the context of the people you want to reach is not needed and it's not useful so you are going to go down take the same product to a group of people a children's class a sunday school are we together now a nursery school and all of a sudden you become a celebrity it is not enough to be valuable it is important to ensure that your value is needed and useful within the context of a civilization this is where a lot of business people continue to waste people's time they just say be valuable generically speaking it's not enough to be valuable your value must be needed and must be useful are we together let me state a law that is used in business that many of us um, you've heard me say it i think in one of the sessions it's called the law of compensation and this is what it states our rewards in life please write it down our rewards in life will always be in exact proportion to then you put a colon i'm going to give you three things sorry we're doing a lot of dictation this morning our rewards in life will always be in exact proportion to then you put a colon number one the need or the demand for what we do our rewards in life will always be in exact proportion to number one the need or the demand for what we do that means your reward is dependent on the demand for whatever it is that you do number two our ability to do what we do skill proficiency prowess our ability to do what we do please don't think you are wasting your time writing our rewards in life will always be in exact proportion to the demand for what we do our ability to do what we do number three the difficulty in replacing us you are valuable to the degree to which it is difficult to find a replacement to you the difficulty in replacing us when a company is about to be downsized there are people who know they will not go why because it is difficult to find a replacement for them i came across a very smart it guy years ago lives in kaduna but works in lagos he runs he works for three organizations and works only three times in a week and his minimum salary is five hundred thousand. very smart guy his intelligence is what is behind the success of many of the companies that he is part of because it is not difficult to find a replacement for him things like tribe age even his mistakes no longer count against him listen to me you remain valuable to the degree to which it is difficult for us to find another you if there are plenty use then you will not last long in the finance realm a few years ago i met a great man of god very great man of god and then sowed the seed just blessed him and then he was to pray for me 
and he prayed a prayer that my my personality is i'm not that kind of person i was sent to the body so i don't like anything that creates competition or try to assure people no and he just laid his hands on me and said god create a problem that only this man can solve now it didn't make sense how will you pray that kind of prayer when is my desire for everybody to have what i carry but i found out later on that it was not a selfish prayer he was just saying lord keep this man useful keep him in a position human beings are very wicked when they find a replacement to you they will leave you overnight so most of what we call loyalty is simply an awareness of the difficulty to find another you that when people can find another you in a heartbeat they will leave remember the person you used to bread from before before the one you now buy from came you pass that one and greet him how are you customer he said no 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 i'm no longer your customer i don't have any personal interest in your product are we together how about filling stations when there's foil everywhere you pass somebody and even wave him and say i'm coming back to see you and go to a filling station that has one naira difference but when there's foil scarcity you will stand in a filling station you hate and pray that they attend to you because you know that that's the only place that has fuel it is black market even if it's blue market whatever kind of market you just know that i need fuel now when there is fuel everywhere you see these are uh, black market people and you pass them and say look at all these useless children they don't do anything useful with their lives two weeks later there is serious fuel scarcity and you call them ah, no fuel and they say okay just go to the back of that place I'll the same person that was useless yesterday now has become useful because a need necessitated his value so when the bible says darkness covers the earth it's a signal to you that it's a time to be wealthy darkness is a symbol of confusion and disarray and it says that whenever you hear that there is darkness upon the earth and gross darkness upon the people then you rejoice because you now know that it's time for you to arise and shine are we together now there are a number of auxiliary principles i would like to teach us because this is presumed to be a business session i would go a bit deep just um give me the next okay let's see it's a few minutes past seven now let me walk till 7 30 and then we'll use the remaining time to do a q and a you see when you are valuable now how many of you were blessed by this lady's ministration honestly why have you not given her money for it do you agree that she's valuable did you clap for her but why have you not given her money she's living a life of value but not a life of reward with respect to what i'm saying now so you agree that she's skilled you agree that she's valuable that one naira will not leave your pocket to bless this lady imagine for instance that she were married are we together and she left her husband for three days to come for a conference and singing morning afternoon evening and when she's done she goes back and her children say mommy what did you buy for us she said, i brought an applause people truly truly love what i did but no reward look at me please it is time you move from being commended to being rewarded Your value makes you worth of commendation. But your reward when you remain valuable only remains psychological. It will never translate into any material benefits until you understand what I'm about to teach you. In addition to the law of value, the next law I want to teach you is called the law of productivity. Write it down please. The law of productivity. middle belt listen to me northern ants listen to me 
my dear people on the plateau listen to me this is the demon behind our frustration we are very sincere people we are morally sound people but we must obtain grace from God to be productive now remember that I'm part of you so I'm not some person trying to insult your intelligence the productivity level within these regions is so small that is the reason why people never rise to be valuable means to identify your potentials that can solve problems to be productive means to refine that value to the point where they become products and services that can now be served with excellence are you getting what i'm telling you now you move from being valuable to being productive when your value is number one refined everybody say refined please shout it say refined and then number two packaged say packaged now assuming this our dear lady please let me have this assuming this dear lady recognizes now that i have a grace for worship are we together no church may necessarily invite her but anytime she happens to show up when you are there you are you enjoy her ministry is that true how many of you enjoyed her ministry let's see your hands again these are all the people remember the 7.2 billion people i spoke about that's your money with them all of them for as long as they love what you have that means there is potential to reward you but not at this level now when this lady subscribes herself to correct mentorship both musically spiritually and otherwise and now begins to refine her value are we together now now she's, she no longer becomes amateur in dispensing what she's doing. She now understands the entire system around the music industry, say. Through mentorship. She rises to a position where her value is refined. It's amazing that the more she's refining her value, we will know that that value is being refined. And it will change our perception and our approach of her. The next time someone will invite her and say, can you come be a blessing? And you will not just tell her, God bless you again. Something is changing because she's refining that value. Then, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, she now puts an amazing work in a CD. Productivity. Now she has translated the gift of God in her into something she has immortalized her impact by giving you herself to take back home so she's in your house now she's in your car now are we together now she may not get a visa to go with you to the u.s but you carried her to a you to u.s and someone heard about her and said i need this lady in my room and since you can't bring her body you bring her products and she begins to receive astronomical returns that would never have been remember she's still skilled she's still godly this is a realm many of us are. there are some of you here if you cook who we'll eat both the plate and the food it's not pride before you went to any small you've never even gone to a catering school but you watch people who are chefs on tv and with all humility you just laugh and say it's not pride though but i know the mistake this woman is making value is not enough you must move to the realm of productivity where your value is first refined don't package anything unrefined your value is refined and then turned into products and services the law of productivity let me give us the third one very quickly please look up as powerful as productivity is in itself it will also not bring you a reward it just prepares you to be rewarded because i can reject what you have 
although you have packaged it i can choose that i don't like it is that true and so you have the product now but it doesn't mean i will patronize you leads me to the third law i'm teaching you this morning the law of exchange this is where rewards are now materialized the law of exchange please look up those of you in business here will agree with me that companies invest millions and millions of naira and dollars in something they call advertisement are we together why is that so because they are attempting to leave this law called the law of exchange so someone has a product a new kind of pasta for instance and they know you are not going to patronize them so they hire all kinds of people to act a two minutes advert and they roll the pasta and zoom it remember you are watching now they watch a hungry person and they roll the pasta and lift it up and when the person swallows it they now show the whole anatomy i mean they show how the thing fixes the body and you are there watching you think you are not being baited by it and you just watch and say lies until you go to buy the product you will see what you will buy people call vix lemon plus baba blue is that true the name is not baba blue but the image of that man and what happened name the product they want are we together now people call every toothpaste mclean why is that so because priority status gave them a space in your psychology please understand what i'm teaching you it is not enough to be valuable from value you move to productivity and then from productivity you move to exchange it is at the point of exchange that your resources come to you let me tell you this there are two ways to compel those who need you to come one by letting them know you are there two by asking for the support of the realm of the spirit marketing and advertisement is a way of making people know you are there if we are hungry now and you have a restaurant by the corner and we are not aware you are there we cannot come and patronize you your food is ready but we are not aware that you are there there's a lady i take a lot of um i i hardly take concentrates in fact i stopped taking concentrates years ago i i take a lot of natural and then organic you know drinks and products and one of my precious ladies she probably may be here she has a very big farm in your city here farms all kinds of things strawberries um you know all of these kinds of things cucumbers i think and so on and so forth i i was never even aware that someone that i knew that came from me had these kind of things can you imagine that and then the day i got to know right now she's the one who sends these products from joss to kaduna all the time without fail so that they use it to make my smoothies and all of these things right from your city here there are people today who are looking for what you make and what you farm at an industrial scale and they are willing to reward you in a way you are not even prepared to receive but they are not aware you are there let me tell you when you do your homework and you are sure you have done your homework don't be ashamed to let the world know i am here are we together now yes it is all right the challenge most times is we've not done our homework we are like the fig tree 
we begin to invite people and there is no fruit and so when they come they become frustrated why because we have leaves but no fruit let me challenge you here that when you know you have i know joss joss is a strange place with gifted people in every walk of life it's true it's true when you see someone who tells you he plays instruments in joss fear that person because he will play something that even a producer somewhere cannot do. Yet yeah, that person is roaming around like a fugitive within the length and the breadth of a city. No reward system. No intelligence to what they are doing. This is why a few people from this city who dare understand productivity or exchange, when they go out other regions say, you won't come back here again. You, can, you are so valuable and the city is not rewarding you yes sir jesus came as the word but at that point he could not do much so he went to the next level productivity at age 12 he was in the temple learning and building his understanding and for 18 years he disappeared we didn't hear anything about him he returns to jordan to be baptized listen carefully 18 years then he's 30 years and john baptizes him and then the heavens help me open and a voice marketed him this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased here's the advertisement hear ye him exchange happens both in the earth realm and in the spirit there has to be a voice that says hear ye him there has to be a voice that says patronize her product this is very powerful muslims know this very well they understand it are we together the law of exchange it is important for people to know listen over 70 percent of the people that invite me for ministrations here and there and 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 quite honestly i live a very busy schedule very very busy schedule over 70 percent of them do not know me but a product that came from me was guided by the angel of the lord to their ears You've heard people testify that they will buy new flash drives and open it and slot it and see the teachings there. Now that one is no longer human. There is a voice from heaven that is saying, hear ye him. When God says men should hear you, anything will hear you. A fish will hear you. A donkey will hear you. You open your shop and you put a poster. I make hair what voice said come to you there has to be a divine verdict from heaven and then while heaven said hear ye him there were men on earth it was noised abroad that jesus was in town he didn't tell us who but we know they were men when both men and angels announce you the world will come to exchange listen to this do you know a number of people didn't know that uh, for for whatever reason um they didn't know that i was coming into town and i got up this morning with a text from a woman i don't know who she is maybe one of your senior women and she said sir are you in joss then i replied back i said yes she said i had a dream i don't know if she's here she said i have it i had a dream this morning that you are in joss please can i see you I've been wanting, you know, to just talk with you and sow a seed. And now is my opportunity. I just laughed. I said, oh God. Those who don't understand this thing, Ba. The same way when God says, hear ye him. Someone will call and say, have you graduated? Why did I see you with a, mat, a graduation gown in a dream? Because heaven is saying, hear ye him. Lift ye him patronize ye her the law of exchange the law of exchange is 
deeply mysterious and spiritual deeply there is a business side to it but there is a gap to it that no man can explain only the size of God can fill that vacuum so you are valuable having the ability to provide products and services that are needed and useful and then in addition to that you are productive this is the part all of you must pay attention to productive how many of you bake let me see your hands honestly not pride not you know you do it let me see your hands don't if you are ashamed of it it's a sign of incompetence which is very good for this conference it's, it's important you lift it so that we see so that you also are a witness that we are justified to not patronize you are we together okay drop your hand how many of you cook you know god gave you this thing both men and women men cook too are we together please put your hands how many of you farm anything around agriculture how many of you are into it it installations whatever it is how many of you are into real estate anything that is around real estate why don't i know you yet you know me you never had to meet me to know me if you are waiting for me to meet you before i know you then i will meet you when your your daughter is getting married and you will be too old at that time are you seeing now remember everything i said you raised your hand why don't i know you if we say cake in joss why are you not the face that comes if we say farming in joss why are you not the face that comes up are you blessed this morning if we say it in joss why are you not the face one time I wanted to buy some property within this town and i was thinking in my mind i said who is doing who is in real into real estate in this city and my mind was blank i didn't know anybody at all now you are angry while i'm talking i'm here now apostle i'm here no you are here in your room i don't know you are you seeing that now imagine listen i hope you know that you must respect those who have the money you want to collect if they do not know you are there then there is no system of reward i want to challenge you listen carefully you must trust god for the wisdom ah oh dear god bless you pastor I'm honored and happy to have you around. Let's honor him, please. <laughs> Pastor of House on the Rock, just thank you. Are we together now? So we're dealing with this. Our time is almost gone. I hope you will go for work today. Oh. <laughs> Hallelujah. If we spend half the time we spend sitting in the office of so-called big men, trying to wait for support from morning till night and i i understand we do that a lot in this city we roam around people help us you know and all these proverbs that we have invented through the years that continue to crystallize our financial degradation we must trust god for grace that through understanding we will rise to a point where we know that every man's financial destiny is in his hands value is not enough you must move to productivity 
productivity is not enough you must move to exchange it is at the point of exchange that you are not only commended for your value you are not only patronized but you are rewarded you become priceless when no material amount becomes unfair to reward you with that means when there is no material amount that is perceived as too much to reward you with then you truly are priceless remember i told you yesterday that everybody is a giver there is a version of you they are looking for that they have not seen that's why they will not give it's amazing i watch this all the time and, and respectfully so as i prepare to round up you know here and there by the privilege of god's grace people here and there sow into my life and bless me and sometimes when i see the seeds they are giving i'm, I'm almost tempted to say you don't have any neighbors in your area needing help those same neighbors can come and say please help my child i don't have school fees only 10 and the man says please don't disturb me and yet you can meet another man of god with a million and say sir this is just for recharge card how much recharge card is one million what network sells that kind of recharge card are we together everybody is a giver but until they find the version of you that can attract that dimension of possibility you will never be able to access it value productivity exchange if i leave you after a conference can you make me and force me to carry you both in my mind and in my car zuckerberg follows you even in your prayer closet the guy is sitting in his office but he's all over the world he immortalized his presence he institutionalized himself within the context of a generation with a product are we together yes. google they are so they are so flawless that they can create a profile about your life without seeing you simply because of the way they have insisted that you need them they have literally rewired your psychology they know when you begin to browse about pregnancy they know that this person just got married when you begin to browse how to know whether i have twins enter they know how to take care of a child enter how to manage stubborn teenagers enter they can use that profile over a period of 10 years and create something about you without seeing you listen when you are alone you do not prosper you must spread yourself to people through your products let them carry you are we together now yes that anything i mention your face should represent it within a territory real estate your face should come up it your face should come up you must trust god and obtain grace to conquer mediocrity this morning i'll retreat from my session so that we we'll quickly do the q and a and then we're done but never forget what i just taught you go up the mountain bring wood build my house i will find pleasure in it and i will be glorified enter the systems and the structures with a technology that is akin to a magnet and while you go through that system you will attract possibilities and with it build my house and i will be glorified you can wave poverty goodbye and in experience it will wave you back not by looking for things anything you look for 
that is material you will not find it because everything is attracted from yesterday by who you are becoming not what you do success is what you draw into your life by the metamorphosis that happens to you and this morning you are learning that the business and the spiritual laws are not different they are two sides of the same thing and that there is a levitical pattern earmarked for the prosperity of men of god that is not applicable if you are not in ministry and you must be able to learn how god prospers the saints in the kingdom and second to the law of mental transformation is the law of value our rewards in life will always be in exact measure to the need for what we do our ability to do them and the difficulty in replacing us and then your value makes you worthy of commendation but not worthy of reward then you switch to productivity where you refine and turn that value into products and services that are needed and useful within the context of a civilization prepare to be served with excellence and then the last is exchange that is where the 7.2 billion people scattered around the world all those who have been assigned to bring your reward like a magnet begin to gravitate towards your products your services you are truly wealthy when you become the product yourself it's one thing to have the product it's another to be the product that's the secret behind the wealth of very strange people whose signatures cost millions they don't have products they are the products themselves footballers don't have products they are the products themselves musicians don't have products they are the products themselves preachers don't have products they are the products don't trust anything outside you anything that is truly saved must be saved inside you whatever is saved outside you is risky in order of priority store things inside you thank god for the land but when you become as valuable as that land when they cannot find the land they will find you we have things that's why i started yesterday with your becoming it is more about your being than your doing your doing accounts for a little percentage of your wealth trust me on this becoming there is a version of you that your tomorrow is looking for so when it when tomorrow comes into today it goes back with a report he is not there and yet you are there but not the you he's looking for you must transit through enlightenment light to the version that befits your tomorrow and then everything that accrues that dimension will gravitate towards you understand what we've been teaching in this summit let's pray thank you Daddy. in one minute i like you to pray lift your voice and ask the lord to help you he's taking away confusion in kingdom summits like this many of us just think of business ideas what shop to open what investment to do is why we continue to miss it anything will prosper you when you are transformed the real labor is a labor of enlightenment and transformation the systems and structures are abundant enough there are champions in every field it is never the field it is you it is never the doing it is the becoming as many as received him he gave them power to become power to become not just power to do power to become
Please help those under the hand.